This is Lou Pearlman. He is considered the father of boy bands. As we know, the Backstreet Boys reached massive success, so he thought, why not do it again, and then created NSYNC. One time in his hotel room, he said, let me massage you. I minored in that college. And he secretly recorded her, only to show that footage to the boy groups and call it male bonding. He's also accused, again and again, of s***ing these young boys who are in these bands. I gotta take a break for a second, guys. All right. Lou Pearlman wanted to take over the entertainment industry. He picked the best looking singers to make the biggest musical groups. He successfully launched both the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, but these band members had to pay the price. Lou Pearlman would touch these kids, record them without permission, and have creepy sleepovers without the parents. So let's get into it. As you guys know by now, there are so many evil and nasty people in Hollywood, and we're going to be talking about probably the worst manager to ever exist. His name is Lou Pearlman, and he was a big record producer. He was the person behind many successful 90s boy bands. He had formed and funded the Backstreet Boys, and then moved on to develop the band in sync. So he's the reason why we have these two iconic boy bands. He is considered the father of boy bands. Fundamentally, it is safe to say that he changed the music industry forever. However, it did come at a price, and for many of his clients, so much more. This is Lou Pearlman. I've been wanting to talk about Lou for a long time, but before we get into his career in entertainment, let's talk about where he came from. So Lou got his start in the blimp business in the early 80s. I guess as a child, he was fascinated with blimps, so he ended up with his own company. Well, then his blimp business turned into a private airline charter business. So if you want to go and rent out a private plane, you could go to Lou and do that, which actually led him to meeting very successful people like the band New Kids on the Block. Lou was quoted in an interview saying, I just didn't know who they were and I was questioning how could these kids afford an airplane? Then he said he was told that these kids did $200 million in record sales and about $800 million in touring and merchandising. At that point, he realized that he was in the wrong business. I mean, you would think owning an airplane business would be very successful, but these superstars made even more money. So after meeting this boy band, he wanted his own. So he moved to Florida and started hosting auditions and trying to figure out how he can create a rival to this group, the new kids on the block. As you guys know by now, he was successful. He was able to form Backstreet Boys, then in sync. He had a band called Innocence that had Britney Spears in it at some point. So he was the big man in the entertainment industry. And for decades, Lou impressed investors with limo rides and flights on private jets and paraded them to studios where the huge stars he had groomed were rehearsing. Now let's talk about how he groomed these stars and exploited them, because there's a story from back in 1998 where supposedly Lou invited the band members of NSYNC to a dinner so they could actually get paid off for what they had been doing. At this point, Lance Bass shared that they each were making about $35 a day. So they were going out here, performing, going on tours, selling merchandise, but only getting an allowance of $35 a day. So they thought when they were going to this dinner with Lou that they would be getting a lot of money, all the money they've been working on. But um, they got a check for $10,000 each, which $10,000 sounds like a lot of money, but not when you've been working for over a oh, three years at this point, tens of millions of dollars in record sales, and they get 10k after their $35 a day which $35 a day like you can't even eat in LA for that as we know the Backstreet Boys reached massive success so he thought why not do it again and then created NSYNC both groups were reaching massive amounts of fame they were traveling all over the world working non-stop and Lance Bass revealed that at that time each member was making about $35 a day which considering the amount of hours that they were putting in was close to nothing 
Obviously, that's a messed up situation and the band members weren't going to let it slide. They actually took him to court for their money. When they challenged Lou in front of a judge, Lou tried to explain himself saying that he was in sync, that he's entitled to 90% of their earnings. So the five band members just needs to split the 10% amongst themselves, which is not fair at all. And the judge was really taken back by what he said. But there's more than just the financial issue because he also touched his band members, these young boys, and put them in compromising situations. Lance Bass was quoted saying, he was very touchy-feely. It always felt a little like, okay, I know what you are doing. Lance has also shared that he would get massages from Lou and just weird, creepy things. And um, I don't know if you guys have seen what Lou Perlman looks like, but it's giving Dan Schneider. Ashley from O-Town said one time in his hotel room, he said, let me massage you. I minored in that in college and it started to get very uncomfortable and he was so happy the phone rang and he ran out of there. But it's not like Lance was Lou's only victim. Actually, there are a bunch of creepy stories like this one from a man named Rich Cronin who claims that Lou Pearlman asked the group that he was funding and developing to fondle his wiener as practice for meetings with German music executives. I guess he also had a tanning bed in his home and he would make the band members get into this tanning bed and then he would record them and then go around and show these recordings, which is just like really a violation. She was naked in the sunbed and he secretly recorded her only to show that footage to the boy groups and call it male bonding. That band member found out that Lou went around and showed that recording and they said that they felt violated, which I totally understand. But as I was doing my research, I did come across a very interesting story because we all know Aaron Carter, rest in peace. Um, he actually, his career was developed by Lou Perlman. They were very close. And there's an interesting relationship between them two because, uh, you know, everyone is accusing Lou of harming them, yet he claims that Lou never did such a thing. But I want to break down a little bit of the psychology behind this. Also accused again and again of these young boys who were in these bands. He had sleepovers with many of the members and was said to even have a tanning bed in his house that he'd make the boys go into and record the entire thing. Now, Lou had a close relationship with Aaron ever since he was young because Aaron, he grew up in poverty. So Lou kind of stepped in and became a father figure. And I guess at one point, Aaron shared that there was a time where he went to Lou's home and I guess he had a bad experience because he never wanted to talk about it again. It was an incident as well of Nick Carter staying at Lou's house and the next day saying he didn't want to talk about it, but he never wanted to see Lou again. Now, Aaron in his life had spoken out about being abused by his brother Nick, being abused by his sister, and being abused by his backup dancers. However, when allegations came out about Lou, he actually adamantly defended Lou. Now watch how triggered Aaron looks in this next interview when he's talking about Lou. And throughout the interview, you know, it was emotional, but he was able to keep it together until we started talking about this man and he had to get out of there. Like, I'm looking at that slate right now. It says Lou Pearlman Project, and it's just so sad. It's just, it just hurts, man. It hurts to see people attack him and continue to continuously attack him because I go through the same thing. I'm going through it right now. He was a, a gummy bear. I gotta take a break for a second, guys. All right? Yeah. I, I just need it. I know. I just give me a second. Now, maybe Lou Pearlman was an awesome man to Aaron Carter. He never did anything to him. He never violated him, never stole his money. Um, but, you know, I just, he's doing it to everyone else. So why would Aaron be exempt from that? And I kind of feel like whatever Lou did to Aaron, he's still like so hurt or he was still so hurt over it that he can't even really comprehend what happened. If Aaron spoke out about other, why defend Lou? We have to remember the role Lou played in Aaron's life. Lou may have been Aaron's but he was also his savior. He took on much more of a parental role. Aaron did not have a close or healthy relationship with his parents, and they were also living in poverty before Lou came in to save them with wealth and fame. 
I think we can all agree that this man is creepy. He's touching these guys, putting them in sunbeds, you know, making bizarre comments, having sleepovers with his talent, very unprofessional. But now we need to talk a little bit about how he financially screwed over everyone and himself. So these Backstreet Boys, these NSYNC members, they weren't getting their money. So what was Lou doing with it? Well, he was investing it into a Ponzi scheme to ultimately scam a lot of people. Turns out that the dinners, the houses, the play rides, they all cost money. All things that his clients were paying for, but they didn't even realize it. It gets even darker when you realize that the feud between these groups were completely formulated. Not to say that the boys were in on it, because they weren't. Essentially, Lou would go into both camps and manipulate them into believing the actual feud themselves. I'd be really scared to have this man manage my money because he obviously wasn't paying these people properly, and then he was taking that money and screwing over so many other people, including banks and entities and the government. Little did the members know that he was stealing millions of dollars from them, but not only that, he was taking that money and their names and likeness and and then using that to create one of the largest and longest Ponzi schemes in history, stealing more than a billion dollars from investors. So let's talk about how he did this. So he launched an investment scheme for investors called Employee Investment Savings Account. Lou Perlman promised investors that it was safe and secure. He also claimed that this business was FDIC insured, which it wasn't. And making that type of claim, that's not good because the FDIC is a government agency that protects banks and will bail them out. So if he's claiming that they are protected, but they're not, these people have no security at all in their investing all this money with this terrible man. And he also had a lot of different businesses going on at one point, which allowed him to continue this scheme for so long. This person was quoted saying that what he would do is he would use the money to plug whatever hole that he needed to plug. So if he had a bank fraud money situation and he needed to pay off an investor, then he would go and do that. But the problem is, is that he would just use the investor's money and keep recycling it. And there really was no money in the first place, he's just taking from one person and giving it to another. Investigators learned about Lou Perlman's scheme back in 2006, and the investigators shared that about eight days after they opened up their investigation, Lou Perlman fled the country. He said there are sometimes defendants do something that show that they are guilty. One of those things is fleeing. So after they saw him leave the country, they knew they were onto something. He actually fled to Indonesia, but he was spotted by German tourists in Bali and arrested by the FBI. I don't know exactly how these German people would know who he is or that he's running away, but they recognized him, they called the authorities, and they got there very quickly. A Ponzi scheme is when you take money from investors and then give that to other investors, making it seem like a lot of money is being earned and things are happening when really it's not. Both groups ended up suing him for misrepresentation as well as fraud, and on top of other charges that he faced like money laundering and conspiracy, he was sentenced to 25 years in prison. So justice was served, and he was sentenced to 25 years. Actually, the judge was quoted saying at some point, like, if he were to give back, like, a million dollars to someone he owed money to, then they would take a year off of his sentencing. I don't know exactly how legit that was, but it's kind of a weird proposition. Once he did go to prison, his determination never stopped. He actually tried to launch a reality television show behind bars, and he tried to create like a little boy band choir thing. Like he, he did a Christmas choir and all this, which, you know, at least he's being productive in prison. There are even reports that share that he even held auditions in prison, so he kept his standards. But Lou Pearlman never realized his dream of creating one last boy band because he passed away in prison. Back in 2016, he died of heart failure at the age of 62. It's kind of a sad ending, but he also did so much damage throughout his career. He hurt a lot of people. I mean, I'm sure there are also other celebrities who just never spoke out. Like Justin Timberlake, he never said anything bad about Lou. We really don't know what ever happened between them. Either way, Lou Pearlman is a clear monster and a man who came into the entertainment industry and tried to ruin lives because he was selfish. He wanted all the money for himself and did he ever actually care about these people? I have no idea, but it seems like ever since the 80s, all he ever really did was care about money. It doesn't look like Lou Pearlman was ever married or had any children, so there's no one continuing any type of legacy or answering for his bad behavior, but that's what it is. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Um, you know, props to Lance Bass for speaking out about Lou. I would 
love to interview Lance Bass one day for my podcast. So we're just, you know, putting that out into the world right now. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.